Hello everyone. DDMF Meta Plugin. The amount of people that have been messaging me about this plugin after the waves oversampling video that I done. So let's kind of make this kind of very brief and short. There's two other Meta Plugin videos going up today. So this one is all about utilizing Meta Plugin within Acoustica Audio Nebula, okay? How it makes your life much, much more easier presets, settings, the whole lot. And also, if you stick around to the very end of the video, I'm going to answer the question a lot of people have been asking me this week. Acoustical audio, can it be oversampled? And if it could be oversampled, what would it sound like? Let's do it. DDMF Meta plugins. It basically routes VST plugins into Pro Tools. And again, you can only use AAX and Pro Tools, but Meta plugin allows you to host VSTs, which you could then internally oversample as well. Okay, so how can you use DDMF Meta plugin to basically make your life a lot easier? Now, I'm waiting to show you, but very, 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 very important first. When you're installing Nebula, okay, via Aquarius, which is Acoustical Audio's um, file management installation thing, okay? It's online. So you have to ensure that you're installing a VST. Remember, this is loading VSTs. So it will only load VSTs. So what I would advise is to install a VST3 version, okay? Most plugins nowadays are VST3. You can install just VST. If it's VST2, it won't work. DDMF Meta plugin does not load VST2 plugins, so VST3, okay? So once you've installed Nebula, okay, and you've scanned um, for new VST um, three plugins and within Meta plugin, you will see Nebula come up, okay? Now, as you can see, I, <laughs> I have made quite a lot of Nebula uh, templates and presets settings, okay? Because it makes my life a lot easier. So for example, let's have a look at um, Tim Petherick's new plugin. Okay, let's have a look at the Tim P Fari level. Now I've called it star level because the great thing is you can call these settings whatever you like. So it makes it easier for recall for me because I like to always have go back to the analog, okay? So um, as you can see here, okay, I've got all three instances of these plugins. Now obviously in Nebula, okay, well by the way, obviously, but if you're new to Nebula, um, what you'll find is that normally these plugins, especially Tim Petherick plugins, you'll have the pre, the comp separate and then and sometimes you'll also have a clipper as well cup wise does the same thing as well in the 33609 you'll find that the pre is separate from um, the comp as well now the thing is you can't add more than one library within nebula it would have to be nebula plugin nebula plugin nebula plugin library 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 but in meta plugin you can chain all of them together save it as a preset again i've got it chained the way tim wants it as well so you can actually save it to be the exact same way that you want it so again for example if you want it to be comp last and pre first again just save the set and name it whatever you like and it'll save it in that particular order and it's all done for you and it's really as simple as that now what's very important to remember when you're doing this is that there are mono and stereo, okay? If you load a meta plugin into a, like a mono track, again, the routing will be mono and same with stereo. So what I have done is I've actually got different settings. I've got mono settings and I've got stereo settings as well. And what I'll do is I'll load the uh, Tim's DBX uh, 160A to kind of show you kind of what that looks like. Now, what you can see that I've done here is I've loaded a mono preset into a stereo meta plugin track, okay? And what you'll notice is that it's the input and the output, okay? That's really the two things that you need to, that's all you need to change. It'll take you like 10 seconds. It's just generally a case of tying up the loose ends, using the virtual routing, put the right to the right, same as the output, right to the right. Because again, in mono, again, you only see the left. Again, link up to stereo. Job's a good one. And all you have to do is just make sure the input and the output are both stereo, right? And again, all you generally need to do is just save the preset. I save the preset. You don't need to, because it generally only takes you 10 seconds, but it's just in case you forget, okay? Because it is, it's going to muck up the sound because it's going to be mono, okay? It's not going to sound right. So again, right, just save a preset like what I did. Two setups, again, chained in whatever way they want to be chained. You just load the preset, 
and that's it. It's dead easy. It's all done for you. You can bypass the plugin in and out as well instead of having to bypass through three different instances. And again, what we'll do is I'll show you very quickly again in the Timp again, we'll do the same thing, go from stereo to mono. It's just a case going output to input, just making sure that all the routing is correct. You might find sometimes that a wire's maybe wrong, you maybe click the wrong button. Just make sure that all the routing is correct you can't go wrong. And then the good thing from here, as you can see, what I've done is I haven't put stereo in um, when I saved the file on this as a stereo. So all I need to do is go to the original and just rename it to stereo. And then again, I just overwrite what I've just done there, save that setting, and there you go, mono stereo. And it's as simple as that. Now, another cool thing that you can use Meta Plugin for is to save your skins. So for example, right, um, we'll use the, the Tim P Opto 32, which is an LA 2A and an LA 3A. Now what you'll find is if you click that edit button, you can change from a black skin to kind of a silver skin, LA 3A, LA 2A. And again, me being quite pernickety, um, I always like to have the skins the same way. Um, so I've got the LA 3A set and the black setting. And again, what I'll show you here, um, again, you can change the skin um, to the silver one, which is the LA 2A, and it's all in this LA 2A setting. And then again, you just save that preset. And when you load it, it'll load up with that skin as well in the LA 2A setting. That's kind of the stuff that I need. And then really kind of the last thing that I think is really, really important, which you can't do in Pro Tools, there's no other way of doing it in Pro Tools, is you can have all three of them up at the same time. So again, you, even four of them if you can fit it in. Now in Pro Tools, when you load one and um, then you go to load another, um, they don't show at the same time. In Meta Plugin, you can have all three. You can have the pre, the comp, the clipper, um, you can have whatever, and you can actually manipulate them in real time. Because to me, it's always been something that annoyed me in Pro Tools that I have to go out it and then tweak and then go back in it and tweak. Where with this, you can generally just go click, tweak, and then tweak, and then tweak. And it's more intuitive that way. And it makes it much easier um, when you've got all the plugins separated. And it kind of treats, it's almost like using it as just one big massive channel strip, which again is much much easier to use way 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 easier to use and then when you've done all of that you, like me you'll have all these different presets what i love about it you can have say like a tim cupwise pre um, and again you can actually load um aquas acoustic aquas into nebula as well so for example you could say have a camel pre um with a Tim P compressor and a like, Tim P clipper and you can have them in different um, orders and stuff and save them in a preset and it's all done for you it's kind of, it's, uh, to me, that's like how I want to use Nebula and it makes Nebula a lot, 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 lot easier to use. So I do suggest that you do check out the other video that I've got up that's all about saving waves over sampled libraries because you're all, all interested about oversampling waves. And um, yes, I'm not going to leave you hanging. And um, to answer the question um, that everybody's been asking me, can you oversample acoustical audio? And what does it sound like? I'll answer them very quickly. Um, one and two. One, no, you cannot oversample, sorry. One, you cannot oversample acoustical audio because of the, uh, the sample frequency packs. And two, what would it sound like? It would sound very, very odd. It's either going to half the frequencies or double the frequencies, whichever way you do it. It just completely mucks up with the sample frequency packs. So for example, um, a 2.5K boost might be 5K or 10K, or again, it might be um, 1.2 or whatever. So it's just not gonna be right. It's gonna sound odd and it's not gonna oversample. So no, you cannot oversample Nebula. You cannot oversample acoustical audio. Any acoustical audio, it's just not gonna do it. It's gonna sound horrible. But you can oversample other plugins, sometimes up to, again, some Waves plugins up to 192 kilohertz. Um, I'm gonna dive into that. I'm gonna do a few videos, um, some compressor shootouts with Acoustica at 48K versus some Waves at 192K. So I'm quite interested in that. Okay, so I do suggest you check out the other videos that I've got up. And again, the Mix on Wednesday playlist that I've got as well. And I do suggest that you like this video. Okay, if you've liked this and it's been helpful. And also um, hit that subscribe button as well. I'm trying to get to 2,000 subscribers by the end of the middle of March because that'll be my 12 month anniversary and I want to hit 2,000 subscribers in my first year. Okay, so like, subscribe, check out the Mix on Wednesday playlist and I will see you again next Wednesday.